The next type of conic section we're going to take a look at is the circle. And the circle seems like the simplest form that there is, and we're going to find out that it's a little challenging to describe it mathematically, but we can do so with an equation. So let's remind ourselves again that a circle is a set of points, and we're going to refer to those points P, and that they're all the same distance away from one fixed point, which is called the center of the circle. And that fixed distance we refer to as the radius, the distance from the center to any point that's on the circle. Mathematically speaking, in algebra, we can describe a circle with an equation. So standard form of a circle, if it's centered at the origin, would look like this. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So that r squared is the radius squared. So if the circle has a center at 0, 0, and the radius is 2, then that circle would have this equation, x squared plus y squared equals 4. All the x's and y's that satisfy that equation, those points would be on the circle. We'll find out later that obviously not all circles are centered at the origin. And if that's the case, there's a slightly different uh, equation that we'll take a look at. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. h and k would be the coordinates of the center point, and obviously if those are both zero, if it's centered at the origin, you have h x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So let's take a look at what we can do with these equations and with graphing the circles that go with them. Our job is to graph the equation and then to identify the radius of the circle. The first thing we need to do is make sure that this equation is in standard form. It should read x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And right now I have x squared equals. So this y squared, I need to get it on over to the left hand side here. So I know that I can do that by adding y squared to both sides. So now x squared plus y squared equals 16. And remember that I want this to be r squared. I need to express this number as something to the second power. And this is relatively simple. You recognize 16 by now as a perfect square. So 4 is r, so the radius equals 4. So now, what happens? We know that our center point is on the origin. The radius is 4, meaning that in every direction, it's 4 units away from the center point, the origin, to a point that's on the circle. I've got four directions in which I can count, positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y. So I'm going to go ahead and place a point at each of those uh, coordinates, 4, 0, 0, 4, negative 4, 0, and 0, negative 4. And now I'm going to round this into a circle. None of us feel like we're really talented at drawing circles. So the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some small arcs through those points that I know this circle is going to touch. And then I'm going to lightly fill in the remaining of the points on the circle, then I'm going to go back over with a heavier line. Okay. Perfect circle? No. Not bad, though. And that's kind of what, what we'll be looking for as well. Let's look at working backwards now. I know a point that's on the circle, its center is at the origin. Can I write an equation for this circle? Okay, well, let's think about what's going on here. I have a point that's on the circle. If I can find the distance from the center to that point, that gives me the radius, and then I can use that radius to write my equation. So, thinking about what we found out at the beginning of this unit in 16.1, can I find the distance between two points in the coordinate plane? All right, that's the distance formula. Distance equals square root of x2 minus x1, square it, plus y2 minus y1, square that, 
and then take the square root. All right, so my x2 is negative 2, and my x1 is 0 because it's centered at the origin. Similarly, 1 minus 0, square it. So I'm going to have negative 2 squared plus 1 squared. So 4 plus 1, so square root of 5. So my radius is the square root of 5. So I have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So that's x squared plus y squared equals square root 5 squared, which I'm going to write as 5. So x squared plus y squared equals 5. Our process here is we're finding the distance between the center and that point that's on the circle. A couple other things that we can do with circles, you may remember the concept of a tangent line to a circle. A line that's tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the circle's radius, and the radius is tangent, or the circle is tangent, the line's tangent to that circle at the end point of the radius that's on the circle. So if you take a look at that, uh, that diagram, you can see the radius drawn from C to point B, that's the point of tangency, and automatically that line will be perpendicular to the radius. So, what can we do with this? Well, now we can start to write equations of lines that are tangent through a circle at a given point. And so, how would we do that? The first thing is, we would have to think about what is the slope of the radius between the center and that point. Then, we take a look at, can I identify the slope of a line that's perpendicular to that radius? Sure, that's the negative reciprocal. Then, I'm going to go ahead and use point-slope form. I have a slope of the tangent line and a point and run it through that way. So, let's see how that's done. Now let's do one. You can give this a shot on your own, referring back to the previous slide, or, and you pause the video and, and check your answer with me or do it along with. So our first move is we need to find what is the slope of the line between the center and the point 4, 1. So I, I'm sorry, negative 1, 4, negative 1, that's my x1, y1, 0, 0 is my x2, y2. So the slope is the difference between the y's, negative 1, minus 0, and the difference in the x's, 4, minus 0. So my slope of that radius that we're being given between the center and this point 4, negative 1 is negative 1 fourth. So my perpendicular slope is going to be the negative reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and invert this. So I have positive four, negative 4 and then take its opposite, so positive 4. So my perpendicular slope, which is the slope of the tangent line at that point, is positive 4. So now I can use point slope form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So my y and my x stay. My m is my perpendicular slope. My y1 and x1 come from the point that we're given. So let's go ahead and fill these in. y minus the y1, which is negative 1, equals my slope 4 times x minus x1, which also happens to be 4. Now remember, this is a perfectly good equation in point-slope form, perfectly good linear equation. If you wanted to, though, you could put it in slope-intercept form. So quickly, we've taken a look at how to graph a circle when we're given an equation. Let's be honest, Desmos is going to do that for us most of the time. 
the more important things to be able to do would be able to work backwards from a point to write an equation if we know the center point and that point that's on the line and to write the equation of a tangent line. So as always, be sure to take the time to cement your thinking by writing a summary of your notes. Three things that you learned today, two things that you want to know more about, and one big question that you still have in space here at the bottom uh, for however you take notes best. If you want to make some connections with sketches or with words, uh, connect these out to things that you already know or remember from previous classes or other classes, you can do that here.